Hi, everyone. I'm John Tarilla, one of the authors of Topology, a Categorical Approach. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fundamental group, and in particular, I'm going to talk about tools for computation. When I talk about pi 1, I think of two different functors, one from the category of pointed topological spaces to the category of groups that sends a space with a base point to the fundamental group based at that point, and the functor that sends an unpointed topological space to its fundamental groupoid. Both of these functors I'll denote by pi 1, and they both factor through the homotopy category. So that gives you immediately one computational tool. Replace your space by something homotopy equivalent that's easier to compute pi 1 of. Now, for another idea, you might want to try and recognize a space that you're interested in as being built up from simpler pieces. Now, in topology and in most of mathematics, there are two fundamentally different ways to build up an object from simpler pieces. Uh, one way involves taking products of those pieces and then looking at the products of those pieces or subsets of the product of those pieces. Those are called categorical limits. And the other way is to glue the pieces together by some sort of uh, relation. That's the same as taking quotients of the disjoint union, and those are called categorical co-limits. And so it's natural when you're trying to understand an invariant, like pi 1, to understand the extent to which it preserves limits or co-limits, because then you can compute the invariant on complicated objects by computing it on the simpler objects that comprise it. Now, to get started with this idea, let me point out a very general fact, and that's the representable functors preserve limits. That is, for any category C and any object X in that category, the functor from C to sets defined by sending an object Y to the set of maps from X to Y preserves limits. The reason representable functors preserve limits is practically the definition of a limit. To get the idea, you can look at products, for example, and compare the morphisms from X into a product with the product of the morphisms of x into the constituent parts. So uh, on the left-hand side, if you have a map from x into the product of a and b, then you can compose it with the projections to get a map from x into a and a map from x into b. On the other hand, if you have a map from x into a and x into b, the universal property, the definition of the product, tells you you have a, a unique map from x into the product making the diagram commute. And so if we view the fundamental group pi 1 as homotopy classes of based maps out of the circle, then it's a representable functor, and therefore it preserves limits. But the limits that pi 1 preserves from this perspective are limits in the homotopy category. And you might ask reasonably, what even are limits in the homotopy category? Or another question is, does pi 1 preserve limits in the category of topological spaces? The answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. So one fact that you can prove, it requires a proof, it doesn't follow from anything I've said so far, is that pi 1 preserves products. But pi 1 does not preserve all limits in the category of topological spaces. Now, the problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that Passing from the category of topological spaces to the homotopy category of topological spaces does not preserve limits. And so if you think of the functor pi 1 as being factored first as the functor that sends a space to its representative in the homotopy category, followed by the representable functor represented by uh, the circle S1, then the second part of that factorization does preserve limits, but the first part of that factorization does not preserve limits. Let me give you an example. Uh, consider the diagram that maps the disk into the sphere as the upper hemisphere and as the lower hemisphere. This diagram is homotopy equivalent to the map that sends a point to the base point of the sphere and another point to the base point of the sphere, uh, because the disk is homotopy equivalent to the point. But now let's take the limit of these two diagrams in the category of topological spaces. In this case, it's the pullback. Uh, the pullback of the diagram with the disks is the circle, and the pull 
back of the diagram with the points is just the point. And so two diagrams that are homotopy equivalent have limits that are not homotopy equivalent. And so you see, uh, homotopy does not behave very well with limits. And you might ask yourself, well, what about co-limits? I think it's uh, helpful to take a step back and just ask the more general question. If you have a representable functor, how do representable functors behave with respect to co-limits? And the answer is, in general, not very well. You can see this just by looking at co-products. You might compare morphisms from X into the co-product of A and B with uh, the co-product of maps from X into A and X into B. Generally, these two sets are very different. So what kind of functors do preserve co-limits, you ask? The answer is functors that are left adjoints. So is the fundamental group pi one uh, a left adjoint to some other functor from groups into pointed topological spaces? Well, sort of. There is a functor that takes a group and can build a space out of it, like the classifying space of that group, um, but this is probably best discussed using simplicial sets or at least CW complexes. For this video, let's take a more direct look at the question of whether pi one preserves co-limits. Let's, uh, to handle this question, let's shift from the point of view from fundamental groups to fundamental groupoids. So recall that uh, the fundamental groupoid of a topological space is a category whose objects are the points of the topological space and morphisms between two points, X and Y, are just homotopy classes of paths from X to Y. The theorem, called the Seifert Van Kampen theorem, is that the fundamental groupoid defines a functor which preserves some co-limits. To be more precise, if you write your space, space X as the union of two open sets, U and V, then you can express X as a push out in the category of topological spaces and pi one preserves those kinds of push outs. In order to prove it, you have to apply the fundamental groupoid functor to uh, the push out diagram. This gives you a commuting square and then you have to prove that that commuting square of groupoids is actually a push out in the category of groupoids, which means that for every groupoid G and every map from pi one of U into G and pi one of V into G that fits together with the maps from pi one of the intersection, that there's a unique map from pi one of the space X into G. On objects, that is points of X, it's easy to define the map. If X is in U, you just define it to be the image of the map, call it F from U into G. If X is in V, you send X to uh, the image of the map, call it G from V into G. Uh, and if X is in the intersection, uh, these two maps agree, so this definition is well-defined. To define the map from pi one X into the groupoid G on morphisms, let X and Y be two points in pi one of X and consider a path from X to Y. We have to send this path to a morphism in the groupoid G. Now there's no question about what to do if that path between X and Y lies entirely in U or in V. But to see the more general situation, let's take a step back and look at X decomposed as the union of two open sets, U and V. And consider a path between a point little X and a point little Y. We can decompose that path into the composition of paths that lie entirely in U or entirely in V. Now we started with a map from pi one U into G and pi one V into G that tells us what to do with paths that lie entirely in U or entirely in V. So we send the path from X to, to Y to the composition of these paths, the image of the paths that lie entirely in U or entirely in V. And to finish the proof, you just have to check that this is well-defined on homotopy classes of paths. That is, that the construction that we just described will send two homotopic paths in X 
to the same morphism in the groupoid G. The details are left as an exercise, and this concludes the, this video.